enable for performance point and things like that because then it'll be real important for me to just show the interconnectivity. All right, now once I finish over there, I've got a data source. And remember what I said, data source is just stored text that tells, that tells reporting services where to go to get the data. That's it, nothing else. So I click next over here. Now, remember what I told you guys, I took all of these tutorials, right? And these all came from the Microsoft site. The only thing I did was I fixed any errors inside of them, altered them slightly, and added explanations and best practices to them. Okay, that's actually a whole lot. But still though, you know, these are all there. And the reason why I did that is because it's very important for you to be able to go back after this, after the video, and do these on your own. So that that way you can get the experience. Even if you've got 08R2, you'll see that the 08R2 um, tutorials are very, very similar also. So you'll be able to follow these videos to learn the best practices. All right, now I'm gonna click on edit as text. There we go. And notice over here that here's our handy dandy Microsoft site right over there. And it's got a data set. So there's a data set over there and I'm just gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna minimize this. So that's the data set to generate it. Now, what I want you guys to do real quick is go through this as if you were in the real world having to design your very first matrix report, okay? So right off the bat, let's talk about this data set just for a second at this step. So pause right here and, and, and let's put it real world. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we always have to figure out whenever we're designing a report, which fields or which columns do we need? That's the very first step, right? So we start out with number one, which columns do we need in order to get the data? Well, 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 actually, usually we figure out what the user needs, but first, but this is pretty early too. So which columns does the use, which columns do we need to fulfill the user data request? And I'm, I might have misspelled something here. Can't remember. Oh, well. Um, the user data request. All right. Now, first thing it's going to say over here is this is a statement right over here that shows me that I'm going to have one column called sales date. Then I'm gonna have another, I'm gonna have another column called territory. And I'm going right over here. You guys can see sales date, territory right over here. Another column called subcategory from this SQL statement. In real life, we would be getting these from our users and then and then mapping them back to a database, but here this helps. Another column called product. And then once I'm inside of product right over there, right? I'm gonna have another one called sales. And then I'm going to have another one called quantities. Now, the first thing I'm going to do over here is I need to figure out, or the second thing I need to do now is figure this out. Um, do um, where do these columns go? And how can I summarize them? Okay, now that's going to be our very first part. So let's start to look at this from a logical perspective, and I'll show you guys how I do it. First, I see that there's a sales date column right over here, okay? And what I do over here is I wanna see what are the number of distinct values, right? So I could run a select distinct where such and such um, select distinct sales date from blah, 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 and get that in real life. Here though, I'm just gonna look at it and eye it. I know, 09105, 09106, right over there. So I've got two distinct values. That means, that, means, that means two groups this way. Two groups right over here. Okay, now that's pretty good. Users only having two groups. So that's a candidate for being on the top and the bottom. So good for, top, good for going on top and bottom. Next up, I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna look at territory. Now ter territory, I see central, north, south. I see three values over here. I'm gonna come right down and there's central, north, south, central, north, south. So what I see over here is for territory, I have three distinct values. Three unique values is what that means, right? Um, central, north, whatever else. So I'll say three groups. That's also good for grouping on, going on top and bottom. It's below the max of eight, five the recommended for the top, by the way. Okay, now let me come back over here and let me go a little bit further and let's click on subcategory. Now on subcategory, what I see is I come back and on subcategory now I'm gonna see, let's see, accessories, which is one group, digital, which is another one. So I've got two groups right over here. 
That's also a good candidate for grouping. Then I come back over here and I'm going to take another look at one and I've got product. Now once you get product over here, right, I come down and there's carrying case, tripod, lens adapter, um, compact digital, slim digital, one, two, three, four, five, um, and then let's see over here, six. So, so let's see, slim digital over there, so compact digital, I think I got six out of counted. One, two, and I'm just eyeing this regular, I run a SQL query. Three, lens adapter. Four for, four for tripod, tripod. Five for carrying case, okay. I only see five. Okay, so I got five. This would not be a good, um, this would not be a good candidate for the top. Now normally it would in a big report, but but relative to the other groups, there's far more of these values. So this is five groups. This needs to go somewhere at the bottom, either in the value section of the report builder, or it needs to go, or it needs to go after some other group, essentially, so that we expand it, expand into it next. Finally, what I see is I see sales right over here, and what I've got with sales is kind of interesting. I want you guys to catch this. With sales, for every single row, I have a unique value. When you have a unique value for every single row and it's numerical, it's going to go into the value section of the wizard. So over here, I've got um, unique value for every for every row, or I've got or I've got um, a, or I've got a, a value almost for every row. Now, some of these values might repeat, like if users buy the same thing or whatever else. But what you really do understand is that this is the one that's going to have, you know, this is the one that's going to have the most distinct values in term, usually, um, relative to the rows. Or it's the numerical one. So you can also think of it that way. In fact, I'll change that just to make this better. Um, think of this as the numerical thing. Numerical number that gets, you know, that gets that gets what's known as aggregated, which means summed up, averaged, or maximized, or something like that. Always goes in the value section. When the number's not describing something, right, like a like a birth date or whatever else, you name it, and when it's actually being aggregated, it goes in the value, or when it can actually be aggregated, it goes into values. Finally, we're going to have this quantity over here. And notice that for quantity right over there, again, it's the exact same case, numerical number that gets aggregated. Also always goes into the value section. Okay, we're rocking now. So coming back with what we've got over here, right? We've got our actually query there, there over there. So we've now, we've got some pretty good logical planning going on. Let's click next. Now, for this particular case, what we're going to do is we need to figure out what's going to go on the top and what's going to actually go on the bottom in this case, right? So following the instructions, the instructions give us some guidelines. Um, the instructions tell us first that what we want to do is for the rows, we want to allow people to be able to drill down from sales date. And then from sales date, what we want them to do, um, um, or, or not from sales date, but from territory, what we want to do is we want to have them go start at territory and then from territory drill down to sales date. Now, let's take a look at that. Territory and sales date over here. Territory has three groups, whereas sales date only has two groups. Oh, no, what's going on? Okay, I said that usually in a database, the, um, the, the one with the lowest number of distinct values goes on top. However, though, what, it, what really matters is the amount of importance. Now, this is a dummy data set. In real life, sales date would have had way more values, or the date would have had way more values than the territory. I mean, way, way more. But again, though, what we want to do is we're forcing people to go rows and they're going to drill down from territory to sales date. So it's the opposite order from real life because it's a dummy data set. And it's what I call demo, demo bait. But remember, even with demo bait, we typically choose, we rank them important. So there's territory and sales date. And we decide that we want that to be on the columns. Or on the rows. Sorry about that. So these are our row groupings right over here. Great. Okay, now, what do we want people to start out with on the, t on, on the columns? Let's take a look. For our column groupings now, right, what it's going to want us to do over there is it's going to want us to go ahead and take subcategory. So we'll start with subcategory. And then from subcategory, 
allow users to drill down the product so we come back down over